Alright, so today I'm working at this uh, kind of cool historic house here. Uh, with this cool little secret entrance here. Um, so basically we have a fridge that's down. It's a fridge-freezer combo. These are pretty cool. There's two compressors. Uh, so let's go do our general checks. First check, both EVAP fans are in fact running. We're good there. And let's take a peek in here, see if we got any ice buildup. We got nothing through the fans. We got nothing through the back, so we're good there. All right, so we're going to come around the back here. And let's take a quick peek at our condenser coil. Uh, you can see it's pretty clean here, so no real concerns there. And let's carry on. Condenser fan is running. That's good. And last but not least, our compressor is running. All right, so let's just quickly go over how this unit's built. So we have one compressor. Um, we have a wall that's separating the cooler compressor. And here's our freezer compressor. So basically, we're running two different units into one, two compressors. So treat this as literally two separate units. And we're obviously going to be focusing on the left-hand unit, the cooler side. All right, so let's go ahead and gauge up. Let's get our smart probes on there. Um, and let's see what's going on inside the system. See here we're at 16 inches mercury and 79 PSI. We're in a vacuum. All right, so as you can see there, uh, we're running in a vacuum. Head pressure was 79 PSI. So let's go figure out what our suction and head pressure should be. So in order to get our suction pressure, we take our desired box temp and we're going to subtract our EVAP TD, which in this case is 20 Fahrenheit. And our desired box temp is, let's aim for 35 Fahrenheit. Let's subtract our EVAP TD, and that's going to give us 15 Fahrenheit. So let's go look up our PT chart. 15 Fahrenheit actually gives us 15 PSI. So we are looking for 15 PSI. And then for our head pressure, we're just going to take our ambient temp and we're gonna add 30 to it so let's call our ambient 75 fahrenheit we haven't i didn't put a i didn't take a temperature reading yet but we will in a minute here and we're gonna add our condenser split which is 30 and that gives us 105 fahrenheit so our head pressure that we're looking for is 105 which is going to give us 135 psi All right, so let's go over to our refrigeration cycle chart. Uh, we're looking for around 15 PSI here. And our head pressure, we're looking for 135 PSI. So as you can see, our suction pressure is low. Our head pressure is low. Okay, so uh, that gives us two potential outcomes. Either we have a plugged cap tube. I know this is a TXV here, but uh, let's just pretend this is a metering device. Either our, our cap tube or our filter dryer is plugged or we have a low charge. Okay, so let's go determine whether we have a low charge or a restriction in the system. All right, so how we're going to figure out whether we have a restriction or a low charge is we're going to put a little bit of refrigerant in the system. So first things first, let's go see what refrigerant we take here. So we have an R and an F refrigerator and freezer. So we have two compressors. They each take different refrigerant. Uh, we're going to be dealing with that 134A. It takes 13 ounces. Let's just go confirm on the compressor. It is in fact R134A. So let's go see what's going on. All right, so I got my bottle set up, my scale set up. Let's just uh, tear off this scale here. And let's start adding some refrigerant. And let's see if our pressures go up or not. If they do not go up, that means that we will have a restriction. So let's go ahead and hit fast forward here. All right, so as you can see here, suction's 13, head is 125. That's telling us we do not have a restriction. We have a leak in the system. You can see our temperature's dropped. We've added five ounces. So that means we had eight ounces in the system. So Let's go ahead here and turn off this compressor and we're gonna equalize the system. We're obviously not gonna gas and go here. Uh, we have to find this leak. I'm only using this method to make sure that we do not have a restriction in the system. I'm not doing it to pump up the system and leak. All right, so as you can see, our suction pressure is coming up nicely, so let's hit fast forward. All right, 
do have a little bit of ice here on the coil. Let's get this all defrosted. And let's hit our fast forward here and then we'll jump into our leak test. All right, so we're just gonna start with our most common error, the evaporator coil. So this is the third leak on this system. So when I review the history, uh, it's leaked every third year, which is like really weird, but that's just how small this leak is. Okay, so we're gonna have to be really thorough here. Let's see if we can find the leak. So we had a leak back in 2019 and a leak back in 2016. So let's take our time here. Let's see if we can find any leaks, uh, get any hits. Um, and we're not gonna leave until we find a leak. Nothing down there on the coil. Let's go hit up all our usual suspects up on the condensing unit. Let's see if we can find any leaks up here, see if we get any luck. Be thorough. Um, we need to find this leak. We've lost about five ounces in what looks like the last three years. So let's go ahead and be extremely thorough here. All right, as you can see, I'm not having much luck here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop my gauge back on. Let's see what kind of pressure we have in this system. And yeah, we only have about 48 pounds of pressure. So let's go check out this rating plate. And so we're only allowed 88 pounds on the low side. So this is probably why we're not finding this leak. Okay, so I cannot exceed 88 PSI on that low side. That is super low for a, uh, an evaporator coil. But we don't want to exceed that obviously. We don't want to create a bigger leak. So let's get as close to 88 PSI as we can. And this explains a lot why um, the leaks couldn't be found in the past. We're just gonna have to be super thorough, be patient. And let's see if we can find this leak. All right, so let's see here. So yeah, we're around 82 PSI. I'm content with that. All right, so we're gonna just have to go super slow here. Patience is the key when finding these leaks. Uh, I'm not leaving here today, obviously, without finding this leak. I don't have a choice. I can't top off the system. It's not an option for me. So let's just go really slowly here. If I got to spend the next 45 minutes sniffing this coil, guess what? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find this leak no matter what. So let's just go nice and slowly. Like I said, it's a leak that comes out every three years. So it's a tiny leak. And finally getting a hit. There we go. All right. So we got something there. Okay. That's good. Let's get a light in here. Let's go take a peek. It's in this back right corner of the evaporator coil. It looks like it's in, in fact in the coil section, not on the U-bends. But let's go take a closer look at this guy. Let's see if we can pinpoint this thing, see whether or not this thing's repairable. So yeah, I'm getting a hit definitely right there. It looks like on the second row. So let's just Go to the other mode here, this pinpoint mode that I like to use. And let's let's see if we get any hits in this mode here. All right, so let's see if we pick anything up in the pinpoint mode. And bang, we're getting a huge leak right there. Um, so let's zero out the meter. Let's see if we can pinpoint if it's on the back row, the second back row, or the third back row. Because it would be nice if we could repair it, but usually when it's in the uh, when it's not on the U bends, it's in the actual fin section. We're not going to be able to repair this leak, but uh, it's always fun to pinpoint them. All right, so let's zero out the meter one more time. It's between the back row and the second back row. Yeah, it's going crazy on that back row. So it's between the back row and the second back row, somewhere in there. We'll zero the meter out one last time. Let's just make sure it's in that area. Definitely getting a hit right in that area. So that's good news, we have found the leak. So now the next thing we're gonna do here is, let's see if we can see it with the bubbles. Now sometimes when it's up in this section here, it's really hard to see a leak. Now we're on, when they're on the sides or on the U-bends, um, the soap will catch it. So let's see if we get any luck here with the soap. Because it would be nice to take a picture, save it on the work order for the customer. 
but I don't think I'm going to get any luck here uh, getting a picture, but uh, we definitely have the video from us taking that with the leak detector. And still no luck on the bubbles here. So let's just go confirm one last time with our leak detector. Let's be 100% confident that there's a leak here. And you can see on the back row, she's going crazy. So we definitely got a leak back there. Um, honestly, the only real way I'm going to find this leak with a bubble test is if I take this out, pressurize it, and put in a tub of water at the shop. But I'm, I'm very confident the leak's here in this back corner. And uh, if we do get this job approved, I will isolate it and uh, I'll probably make a video on uh, putting this thing in a tub of water. So let's get a quote sent off for this and uh, let's see if the customer wants to get a new evaporator coil installed in this unit. All right, as you can see there, uh, we have a pretty stubborn leak we've been chasing. So uh, it was pretty interesting when I pulled up the history and I see that every three years it was leaking. Uh, so the Schraders were changed. It did pass the nitrogen test. I wasn't understanding how it could pass the nitrogen test, but when our coil can only go up to 88 PSI, I mean, like, I'm not going to pull a nitrogen test and do a 24-hour test on a little unit like this. Uh, that unit, that leak is so minimal. So uh, I was determined to find the leak this time when I saw the history, and we eventually hunted it down, which was great. Uh, we'll send a quote out for a new coil. We'll let the customer determine at that point whether they want to replace the coil or not. Um, so you saw me add refrigerant. This is a practice I like to do when I'm trying to figure out if we have a restriction in the system. Uh, I don't want to just jump right into a nitrogen test because if we don't have a leak, I may be looking for a leak for one, two hours. Okay, I want to rule that out right away that we don't have a restriction in the system. So the easiest way to do that is um, we put in the refrigerant charge and then we like to weigh it. So the whole point of weighing it, it tells us how big the leak is. So in this case, it was a five ounces we added in. Once you subtract what's in our hoses, you know, there's maybe three and a half ounces what we added to the system. So let's call that a 20% leak. So every three years, we're losing 20% charge. So that's a really, really small leak. But it's really important to take that step and do that step of adding the refrigerant in because we want to rule out that there's no restriction in the system.